Welcome, Welcome back, back to HBO, HBO Girls, Girls Rewatch. I'm Amelia. And I'm Evan. And today is the day. Oh my god, it's a huge day. We've all been waiting for this moment for years. Panic. For years. I'm panicking. I'm panicking in where? What park? Our basement. I'm oh. panicking in our <laughs> studio slash basement. Um, this is season five, episode six, The Panic in Central Park. We've been request we've been requested to cover this episode since the day one of launching our yeah, podcast. Yeah, we launched a podcast second day of the podcast. We're like, please cover this episode. And we're like, we're kinda at season one, episode two we're right now. We keep going can't in order. And yeah. they're like, No, I don't understand why it's <laughs> taking so long. You seem to be covering every episode but that one. It actually feels disrespectful that we're only doing one episode on this episode. Just I know how monumental it is. On Instagram I'm calling it Shark Week for Sad Girls. <laughs> <laughs> it's panic week <laughs> like i can think of three other things that are shark week for side girls <laughs> <laughs> we should do 40 days and 40 nights of the panic at central park we should go lent mode Ooh, Alva advent calendar like yeah. one clip a day oh we're counting down till christmas <laughs> <laughs> And Christmas is just Christopher Abbott being back for one episode. I mean, also, this is actually kind of major for the podcast. We've never had a guest back a second time. Uh, yeah, literally. This is our Christopher Abbott. This is our Christopher Abbott. We're back for a little secret episode. Oh, my God. And I think you guys are going to be happy with the guest that we have. Because you already know. Because you loved her the first time. <laughs> also, it's in the title and description. And we I know. We're, we're always like so coy with the guest before they come on. And then we're like, oh, actually, you're reading it right you're now. You're right. <laughs> you knew when you clicked, girl. Um, if you're just listening to audio, please feel free to check out the YouTube. We post the full video version. It's not just the vertical clips on socials that you see. Like we do have the full thing ad free on YouTube. But <laughs> if you're walking around, if you're at the gym, I mean, welcome, 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 welcome to welcome our basement. Spotify listeners. Um, we love you and never change. No, actually, this episode's all about change. You can change. You can change, and we'll we'll get into it. We are so excited to jump into the Panic in Central Park. Our guests literally just texted that they're here, so we are going to cross this off to them right now. O-M-F-G, you guys. The Internet Princess is Wait, back. I love you starting with the acronym. O-M-F-G? Because it's an acronym forward episode, if you remember right. Why? Why? Piece of shit. P-O-S. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay, it's amazing that you connected those dots. <laughs> yeah, but you're making your mind map is crazy. It's crazy. Um, we rain, have RF- rain is of course. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna do acronym <gasps> for our guests. Oh, do it. RFQ. 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 A lot of people RFQ. online have been confusing me with RFK. Who's RFK? Robert F. Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that right? Th- I'm yeah. Canadian, so. Like I you okay. mean JFK? No, no, no. RFK is oh, like a new. Guy. He's like he's like the other two, but like for the Kennedys. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I he think, the one that got shot too? No, I think he's like currently like on the scene. I'm oh, Canadian. This is gonna be hair. really embarrassing. No, I don't so know about right. this. Right I feel hair. like he's always like he's making like front to camera videos saying crazy stuff, and like maybe he ran for office, and like people are always talking about him in the news. We thank God RFQ is talking about RFK. RFQ is finally talking finally about RFK. Finally addressing the rumors. <laughs> <laughs> finally clearing up that I don't know who RFK is. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Whoa. We we're so back. Ba- we're so back. You're back in. New- we're so glad you're back in New York. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm so glad I'm back in New York. I was gone for three months, and this is kind of my New York debut. This is like, your New York debut right now. Yeah. You're. We're announcing to the world. Rain Fisher. On RFQ is back in the Did states, as Canadians that? say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was sending out the invites for my homecoming party. And like a lot of people were like, oh my God, I did not realize that you were legally barred from the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that you were like working or something. And I was like, no, I would never do that. Well, You're like, like I actually, I just filmed the movie. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Tell yeah. That. Just I, start telling people. I that. was in a writer's room in LA. Well, the best thing you could do now is like not deny because people are going to throw allegations. You're like, you were in a movie. Yeah. You were doing well, the rumor fun. mill is going to yeah, start yeah, yeah. churning. Like, sure. Sure. Yeah. Take your accolades. Evan well, says when people ask, Ask about the podcast and if it's both our full time jobs, we should just say yeah. Yeah, just say yeah. Just don't deny. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. it's good to get people talking because then, like, you know, there's going to be a room where someone's like, Did you hear that it's our full time job? And everyone's going to be like, Whoa, it must be doing really well. And I would never say it first. I would yeah. never say yeah, it Yeah, that's first. the thing. You never but say it first. bring it up to me, I say, Sure, why not? It, it's like, even. <laughs> I'm yes ending. I don't have like, rules of improv. Totally. <laughs> and even if you can say, like, Well, I'll never tell. 
Like right. keep it a little mysterious and let people assume what they will. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like when straight guy plays gay. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Well, I don't like to put a label on whether or not this is my job. <laughs> 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 it's perfect. It's heaven. I think we're doing the best episode ever. I know. Oh the best god. episode of Girls Ever. Like I'm actually honored for real that I'm back on the pod. Well, you were highly requested. <sighs> we had no choice. We're like, oh, we really? had no we were <laughs> yeah, we we did like, have a lot like of her. anxiety of like who are we gonna get for this episode yeah really what are we gonna do and of course you're so beloved but we did ask about um eight people <laughs> <laughs> totally. they all said no we got somebody in the episode to um do it and then they kind of canceled yeah and almost. then we said okay the universe is begging us to ask our to girl ask to be the Rain. first guest to come home to us well you know what after my stint in the psychiatric hospital i have learned to adopt a positive mindset and like some people would say <laughs> some people would say oh you asked eight people before me like i guess i should kill myself but like <laughs> for me i would say that's top 10 that's top right. ten. For me, I would say I was number nine, firmly in the top ten. <laughs> you made vulture top ten. List. I made vulture top ten, and that is a really big accomplishment for a girl who just moved to New York. No, literally, literally. literally. There's no one else we'd rather repeat. <laughs> How about that? That's so a good accolade. That is true. First, well, first every repeater. Sing, every single guest we've ever had hears this and is like, <laughs> "So you're off my top ten list." <laughs> Iris would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're the perfect guest for the perfect episode. I also feel like the 20 minutes of you talking before we pressed record, we're Marnie goaded. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I got back here to Evan and Amelia's beautiful apartment and I gave them a rundown of what my life has been like. And it really was. Well, that's something that's so magical about this episode is that we are catching Marnie in dire straits. Mm. I'm like, you're the panic in christy pitts park trinity bellwood park. Trinity, <laughs> trinity bellwood's park. Park. park a little toronto reference for all you canadians you know what there. it was also nice because it was like a one woman story like this yes. is a one woman story yeah Maybe and that's like it's story. like that's what my life is also Literally, a one woman story a brunette telling it all well i was really watching this episode and i'm sure we'll get into this but i have never ever related to marnie ever like mm-hmm. i've always been like marnie is the one that i am the least I can never be a Marnie. I don't even understand when people I know are, say that they're a Marnie. And I was watching this episode and I was like, I'm Marnie. Like, oh obviously God. you have to be Marnie in this episode because she's the only one. Yeah. yeah. But I just felt, I feel like I felt su- such a connection to her. I really felt like I understood what she was feeling. And I just, you know, being back in my hometown for three months, <laughs> famously, I was just saying to them, that Toronto is like if they invented a city where all there was to do is hang out with your ex-boyfriend, <laughs> which is very thematically similar to this episode. Literally. And I, I was like, I get her. Like, for the first time ever, I'm a Marnie. And it was very emotional to me. I feel like it's in really many ways, me. you spent the last three months in a lake. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I got all wet. <laughs> all wet in the lake. <laughs> Whoa, I know. I'm really like there is so much to think about. I know. You gave us so much. Well, I let's thoughts and I let's them all. dive straight head first into the synopsis. Um, I feel like everybody listening knows, but let's try and do it in one minute. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Here's our minute really? to win it on season five, episode six, "The Panic in Central Park." In a way, we go. Marn is not happy with Desi and Desi says, Bella, please. And she's running out the front door. She puts her over the head earphones on and she's walking. Who does she walk into? Charlie and his gang. She's walking away, but Charlie following and so does his posse. He goes, you know, what? I got champagne for my real friends. And they head off to a party where they run into Charlie's first yeah, and deal. so Marnie, of course, hasn't seen Charlie in two years. And Marnie is like, you know what? You were kind of terrible at the end of our relationship. And he was like, well, my dad did commit suicide. So I was kind of not being the best version of myself. And Marnie was like, well, I was 22. I also wasn't being the best version of myself. But I'm really trying to be free because I feel trapped in my marriage to Desi right now. So I'm going to pretend to be a stripper. No, a sex worker. Sex worker. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that, Amelia. A psychic did tell me in my past life I was a sex therapist in ancient Egypt. And when I asked what that was, he was That's like, true. I've always a said whore. that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, got it, got it, got it. Um, so she pretends to be a sex worker named Magita Perez. And she, through this, she gets $600 or something from an old man. And then they take it and they have a night on the town. She's wearing this red dress. She looks amazing. They buy a bunch of like kind of mid-looking spaghetti, like Italian food. They dance. They go to Central Park. They get on a boat. It's romantic. They kiss. 
and she's thinking, wow, like I've missed this. Like I feel like I'm a new me. Beautiful. And wait. Oh, okay. Next. Okay. Wait, sorry. Then they go back to his crazy apartment. They go back to his like kind of slummy apartment and garbage bag on a window. He's like, I sleep late. They're curled up in bed. He's like, let's run away together. And Marty's considering it. She goes to, they have sex. She goes to take a shower. She runs into Julia Garner (laughs) playing a beautiful. Last thing you could have guessed. Last thing you could have guessed. Bleach blonde Julia Garner playing. um, Actually, it's sort of prima donna. This is way more than a minute because she's playing Madonna in the new thing. This is kind of, she looks very Madonna. Uh, Runs into Julia Garner, goes back, finds a heroin needle in Charlie's pants, leaves barefoot on the streets of New York, breaks up with Desi. Oh my god and that is one minute and that was exactly <laughs> one minute and i didn't get distracted at all either did we either did we <laughs> i know to be romantic is to be marty in this episode totally and that's why we all see it so since marnie's the only girl in this episode we thought a better question to ask would be mm-hmm. marnie, marnie what marnie, marnie are, are you, you? Such a good question. And even as I was sort of thinking about this episode, I was like, well, I've already been on the damn pod and I already said that I'm Hannah. We all know that I'm a Hannah. How could I be anything but a Hannah? Like I said, I'm watching this episode. I'm thinking, fuck it. I'm a Marnie. (laughs) I'm thinking, well, wait, I'm a damn Marnie. And there's a lot of parts of Marnie that I relate to in this episode. I do feel like there's a part of me that is Magita Perez. (laughs) (laughs) There is sure. a real magita to me that I really felt. I think mostly I really connected with sh- there's a real sort of sense of yearning for Marty mm. in this episode. There's like a dissatisfaction with her life and this sort of there's this earnest yearning and this almost delusional yearning that she has for a different life. And you can see throughout the episode that she knows that what she's participating in is a fantasy. Like, I think she has this feeling the whole time that obviously this is, like, just going to be one night that she can't seriously be with Charlie now. But she's, like, letting herself dream or something. She's, like, letting Mm -hmm. herself play this role. And I really related to that feeling, which is, like, kind of a delusional romantic feeling of, like, letting yourself sort of step into this different life that you always dreamed for yourself. And we also see Marnie, like, this was a huge episode for Marnie personal growth. The moment in the episode where she says to Charlie, like, she like says something about his garbage bag over the window and then she's like no but actually like i'm not here to change you like i can't change you for marnie to say that i got chills i got chills by myself watching the episode (laughs) and you can really see that she has stepped she is magita by the way that's magita talking (laughs) that was magita magita came out no to see marnie fully become um what's her name tara brock radical acceptance yeah she's like i read the book and finally i'm applying it tonight seriously it changed everything it changed everything i mean i mean i gotta someone asked me what marnie i am <laughs> oh <laughs> marnie sorry. what marnie, marnie are, are you? you wait i'm marnie when they're driving to vassar for the first time and they have grover in the back and she's singing her song and hannah's trying yes. to take care of the baby but she won't shut up yeah oh, yay she's free yeah. then I, That's fast the most car she's fast. doing fast car Literally. Right? she's singing fast car she's finally using totally. that music career for something good would yeah. it be crazy to say well ask no, and Marnie, what Marnie are you? So, as we all know, I'm usually Marnie. I'm chronically Marnie. But Marnie decided to be different this episode, so then I stopped relating to her <laughs> completely. You were like, I would try to change him. Yeah, and like, I would absolutely see the red flags and be like, hey, why do you keep going to the bathroom? Yeah. Why are yeah. you suddenly really hyper when you get back? Yeah. Why do we need to go sell cocaine to this man? Why is this girl blonde? (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, But I did. I actually did relate to like Marnie's like recognition that her need for control is preventing her from finding herself. And like her being like, okay, I'm going to try and be free for one night only. Mm -hmm. You know, when I let myself be free for one night only, I almost pass away every time. What do you do when you let yourself be free? She's doing it three times I get lost in the Broadway junction. Wow. No, you're being free way more than that. Um, when I K-hold and Kira had to save me. That is amazing. I actually haven't <laughs> even really heard that story. But shout out to Kira. I'm sure she'd be so good at that. Yeah, she became really strong. She's so strong. And became, she lifted she me is. up. She no. is strong. Well, but I she was you. like, <laughs> to save my life so I wasn't trampled to death. 
we can yeah. cut this. We can cut this. But I always tell the story about when I was with Kira in Ireland and she fought a guy who pickpocketed her and got her phone back. Oh and my then, god, she <laughs> was always talking about this. Like sometimes she just becomes strong. She said, "No, you're not stealing my phone. Give <laughs> yeah, it back. Give it back." And he did. And he did. Yeah. And that's what you needed when you became kind of Makita for a night. You let yourself be well, free. just like Marnie yeah. in moments of extreme distress, mm-hmm. you gain a strength you didn't know you had, totally. which is finding out that the lake is actually not so deep. Yeah, you can stand well, up. Her swimming in that dress in that lake, Allison Williams, um, is the first time she really did any stunt work in the show, and she yes. said it was really hard to do it in sneakers and a heavy wet dress, really, while opening her eyes. Okay, so, so I just want to get the tough. I want to get ahead of this before we get even into <laughs> our next segment. Um, Marnie is walking through the streets of New York barefoot, and I I saw that and I was like, "There's no way Allison Williams, someone who won't even be nude in her writer or whatever, mm-hmm. is walking barefoot through Bushwick." I feel like maybe they cleaned the street beforehand. I feel like they scanned it for threats. I googled, "Did they clean the street before Marnie walked through it?" As if Google would know like exactly tell. what I'm talking about, <laughs> word for word. Well, you should have put it into Chat GPT. Yeah, I should have asked Chat GPT. It actually knows a lot about girls. I ask the questions sometimes. <laughs> but I did find out she had a thin mole skin on her foot. It's true. She had really? mole skin, but she also famously likes to take her shoes off and walk around New York City. She said she would have done it anyway. She usually does it, but now that she's scared of paparazzi, she wasn't doing it in 2017 at the time of the article. But when she's coming back from the bar and she's going up to her apartment from the Uber or the car, she classically doesn't have her heels on and she's walking on the streets in New York. Really? So she's used to it. Our girl's used to it. I did not know that. And that ch- kind of changes my whole perception of her. Sorry, I'm actually reeling right now. No, literally. Wait, she's bad. Let's end the episode and then we'll regroup <laughs> and then we'll come back. Yeah, let's take some rests. We're fucking back. By the way, we just took about three and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> we were if our hair looks longer, it grew, deep grew, that, actually fast. grew. Yeah. It grew that fast. <laughs> it actually grew because I was thinking about Allison Williams walking around barefoot in New York City. Brave, have you ever done that, by the way? I have never walked around barefoot in New York City. I was about to say, this is another kind of like Marnie moment for me because it's not one-to-one, but something that I love to do is walk around outside in my underwear. Mm, and really that's so brave in new york i've never done it in new york but i'm sure that i will very soon now that you have your visa now that i have my <laughs> visa i can do whatever <laughs> i want um but it's it, one of my favorite things to do in the last city that i lived in toronto and then also in vancouver is that i just love to go outside with like a t-shirt and just my underwear it's an adorable look it's an adorable look in 2021 i was wearing my checkered boxers everywhere outside i put two pair of underwear on yeah regular um like those the stretchy kind and then the looser boxers Boxers on top and i just kind of just walk around new york city pretending they're short yeah such a big trend a while ago it really was a while ago by the way yeah it's a long time it's a really long time ago i was so brave for doing it too walking Mm -hmm. around brooklyn harvest yeah and haynes underwear yeah i felt amazing that is brave Uh it's crazy to hear (laughs) how it is and say that Um, i've worn nike pros as pants to the movie theater and explain to me what that is. It's like spandex. I wasn't popular in high school. So it is like no, a pair it of... it wasn't for popular girls. It was like... Maybe no, you were it w- popular because you weren't... <laughs> 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 it, was really it was for popular girls in Texas. No, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Um, well, I just listened to the episode where you revealed you were on dance team. Oh, my God. Brutal. Every episode? <laughs> Every episode. <laughs> no, and by the way, I try to bring it up as much as possible for some reason. <laughs> But who did we have on that was genuinely interested? And I was like, I'm going to dive into it. I feel like Everyone. it was Natalie. I feel like oh, it was fully Natalie. Yeah. I was actually thinking. Um, she really was. But um, every time I wear it, I do feel like I'm like, I'm like, girls can do anything now. Yeah. Wait, so it's like little, sp- are they leggings? They're just short little. It's literally just like if your leggings were cut off right where your butt ends. Where your butt crack is. Okay, now I know exactly what you're talking well, about. I think booty shorts are so big right now. And yeah. it's going to be. That's what everyone's wearing. It's kind of Nike pros without labels. Everyone is going to be wearing American Apparel Disco shorts. Everyone. And I bought my pair three years ago, and it was too early. I got a <laughs> silver pair of American Apparel Disco shorts, a size too small because they don't make them. A true vintage American Apparel Disco short does <laughs> not come in my size. A size too small. And I wore them like the first time I ever came to New York like three years ago. And I was standing in Washington Square Park and a guy walks up to me and says, I'd love to slap that ass. Oh, 
<gasps> Wait. Second day in New York, American Apparel Disco shorts. You said, I think I'm going to like it here. I said, I think I'm going to be okay. For you to <laughs> verbatim tell a different story about a man harassing you, and that's almost the exact <laughs> same as Rain was like, I'm walking from the <laughs> subway. A man <laughs> has just needed me to adopt him emotionally. Yeah, like that's the crazy thing, and that actually happens to me a lot. Like You, when brought your, you had a Charlie. <laughs> I had a Charlie and his crew. I had a Rips. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a rips on the street who was following me all the way to evan and amelia's house and like he didn't even he wasn't like hitting on me he just like really wanted to talk about his day and he was like i even feel bad sort of making fun of it but of course he was a man who was following me and forced me to hug him so it's okay yeah but he was just like yeah like he literally said i keep trying to talk to girls on the street and like they don't want to talk to me and it He's really hurts my show. feelings <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You forgot to mention there was a full <laughs> film crew. Yeah, yeah. And he was saying, where do you live in New York City? <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to tell you. I'm really scared. I just got my visa. Please. Um, this is a beautiful app. Should we do... Okay, how are we feeling? Should we do scene by scene or just talk about our feelings? I mean, let's start at the beginning and see where we go. Yeah, yeah let's start at the beginning. See let's where we go. lean into Lena. So uh, just prefacing, Lena has watched the film... The Panic in Panic in Needle Park. Mm-hmm. The Panic in Needle Park, it which came is out like in 1970. It's mm-hmm. Al Pacino. Um, we have, of course, never seen it because we were oh, born in 2004. Wait, wait. I of watched course. the first hour this morning. I couldn't get to the second hour, but the first hour was really. Moving. Evan was like, "I yeah. watched the movie." Well, just half of it because it was two hours, and I like the length of a film. <laughs> oh yeah, the classic length that all films are. Mm-hmm. But they do like. Uh, scenes of heroin in it but they're so graphic like they watch the blood go into the needle <gasps> during it was just that. it was too hard i actually almost threw up on the amtrak ride on the I way to here know. today right. well yeah. the premise is like two heroin addicts are falling in love in central park or something yeah, but he's like more like rent like rent oh my oh my <laughs> god there are so many musical references in this episode too <laughs> in ways we don't even know yeah but um Lena had wanted to write a like vehicle, like a really meaty episode where it was like kind of bottle up Allison style. Mm -hmm. And then she had seen this movie and she was like, oh, my God, what if I did this with Christopher Abbott? And Christopher Abbott had originally left the show because he kind of like asked, like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's kind of like Catherine Heigl, Grey's Anatomy style. He wanted more serious roles. I was like, what is more serious than playing Charlie and Girls? Charlie, the emotional heart of the first season. More serious than playing Charlie and Girls? A heroin stricken Charlie and Totally with a new voice. So what Lena said was that she wrote the entire script before knowing, before yeah. asking charlie or before asking christopher abbott because she was wow. like well unless he reads it i don't think he'll understand that like i'm so serious about like how like cinematic and like big and important and whatever yeah. and so then she wrote the whole thing finalized it and then sent it to christopher like would you do this like imagine writing an entire episode of prestige television that goes that down in history is amazing and not knowing if like the cast member you need would do it i love how i come on this podcast and i never know what i'm gonna learn <laughs> <laughs> and that i can say that because i've been on it twice now literally and every time i'm like i'm gonna learn something totally new that i didn't know before <laughs> And did I didn't you want to know? And I did. Wait, yeah. We should have gotten you. What is that thing SNL does when you're a five timers club? A gun. I, th- I think it's a gold suit. <laughs> we'll get you, a suit. <laughs> you guys should have gotten me well, a gold suit. Allison, everyone was hating Marnie before this episode came out. Like she yeah. was getting so people would come up to her in the stream and be like, I hate your character. <gasps> She's like, it's really closely tied to me. Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she was born to play the she role. She's so excited for this episode because she's like, finally, it's like, um, this is some, I mean, of course, how could you not be excited for this amazing script? Yeah. But she was worried that no one's going to watch the episode because they were finding out it's like a Marnie forward episode, yeah. a Marnie episode, but actually kind of turned her whole character arc. My heart's right. kind of breaking hearing that. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it really did. Like, and I am a little bit of a Marnie hater. I'm not a Marnie hater because I, love i love who she is in the show and i think she's so funny i love her character i love all her scenes but like i said i've never been a person who connects with marnie right and i think what i loved about this episode in terms of like the writing of it is that it really wasn't that they made her a different character like she was totally still marnie they weren't writing like a different voice for her and it, it really made sense for her character but you really just felt like you were seeing this new side of a person mm. like it felt like when you know someone like when it's someone that you like see around and you like don't really want to talk to them like when you're at a party together but you do and you spend a year like kind of knowing them and then one day you have a real ass conversation with them and it changes your whole perspective Whoa. that's what it felt like watching this episode you're so right 
It's Literally. like when you take someone and like, I like your party scenario. Because yeah. sometimes you're at a party and that person shouldn't be there, but they're there. Totally. And you're talking to them. And you're totally. like, our housewarming. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I will say as a Marnie, that happens to me a lot is mm. like, because I think I present in like kind of a flattened way mm. and people will like make assumptions about me. And then once they have one five minute conversation with me, they will like be like you know what you're actually smart yeah yeah and i'm like totally like you didn't have to reveal to me that you thought bad things about me (laughs) before this but i do feel like i won a war i won a battle that is so express femininity is like it's not intelligent unfortunately i'm like when people don't understand the layers of irony behind my tennis skirts it's like this is actually exhausting i am a gleek yeah (laughs) Yeah. it's like i actually didn't even watch glee just so you know (laughs) i've had like multiple people i was just quoting her on stand-up i know what you're talking about (laughs) what are you talking about you never seen glee no i've seen glee but i didn't really care about it that much you know it brought my family together she was playing a character on stage you know what and women can do that (laughs) I didn't see uh, once they went to college it seemed sad I had to tap out. No, I won't. <laughs> That's fair. And also that is true. I didn't know earnestly that um Brittany and Santana were ever dating. And I like saw like all the episodes where they were fully dating and I was like, they're not dating. They're really good friends. I just like didn't know girls could be gay <laughs> fully. You just saw boy. I was just like, Kurt's gay and that's the gay character. <laughs> that's the only gay character in the whole show. <laughs> Oh my god, this is like a lesbian date though, this episode. Yeah. Like it's eight it hours. Is. You're going totally. through you're going from morning to night. Like that's lesbian culture. And that's why it's screen. so romantic. Exactly. And oh well, this is a question that I have for you guys is do you prefer Charlie season one or this new Charlie for yourself personally as a sexual Ooh. option? And then also just in general as a character. Great. I mean, I always have a thing for Oberlin students. Um, and the way he presents in this episode, it's like he's no longer an Oberlin student. Mm-hmm. Um, so in my heart of heart, I do prefer to earlier Charlie just because it's like I love it when a guy goes to a liberal arts college. Totally. Lock me up. Yeah. 8% acceptance rate. Okay. <laughs> Golden handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. Is it really that hard <laughs> to get away that key? No. Someone told me that this weekend. I was like, I can always guess when a gay guy goes to Brown. He's like, did you? I was like, you went to Brown. He's like, no. But he's like, I went to a college with eight percent acceptance rate. And then he made me guess every college. I was like, just <laughs> oh tell <my> God. me. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so many out there. That's there's crazy. So just say Oberlin. I'm like, I just told you I hit a gravity bong for the first time, and now you're gonna make me go through every liberal arts college in the Northeast corridor. That's actually no. a, that's the nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> that's the night. That's what I think will happen if I smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let this be a warning. <laughs> Yeah, I like old old Charlie just because um heroin addict isn't for me and also I hate You're crazy girl. I hate Literally. when I, I'm like sorry to be different but I just like when somebody did to heroin it just doesn't seem like a good for me. Mm-hmm. Um but I also just like don't like kind of like scruffy beardy like I'm like th- to me it just yeah. like Charlie's a boy and well Charlie yeah. Oberlin oh. is boy and Charlie this is like a father. Well, there's a Travis Kelsey element to his physicality in this episode. Wait, I was hoping someone would bring now, that up. Though. Wait, but what that? are you? I am well, at the end of the day I'm going to be a season 1 Charlie girl. Yeah. Season 1 Charlie. Um, we literally just lost half the audience. <laughs> <laughs> we all went season 1 char. <laughs> but I'm but I'm going to provide some new Okay, okay. Season 1 Charlie is just too much of a slam fucking dunk for me. Mm. Like he's like doting, he's like skinny and he like went to Oberlin and he's like a doting little like sweet guy and like he would love reading your Substack. He would love. <laughs> he'd be like, "Wow, babe, like you had a really good Substack this week." Yeah. And I'd be like, "Thank you, Charlie." <laughs> he is in like a band like a cute little band like that is just like every check is checked. Every box and is checked. And it's apartment? Oh His my God. apartment? It's like yeah. that bed that he has. Like, oh my God. It's too easy. That episode, I honestly, there are a few characters in television that I've been so viscerally attracted to. I will say that the episode where Marnie sings Stronger and then they have sex in his office, I paused it to masturbate. <laughs> well and by and the that's way not a joke. that's everyone's story yeah. yeah well because there was something that i connected to so deeply about like a really sweet guy and like annoying ass girl like okay. is that's the me same, Wait, that's my story kill we should what? do fuck mary kill season one charlie 
Corporate Charlie, <gasps> season five Charlie. Oh, that's yes. so fun. Yeah, please. I was just going to say yeah. that so relates to season two finale when Adam yeah. runs to save yes. Hannah because yes. it's like fulfilling it's this exactly girl's same. fantasy where like a girl can be a human being yeah. and a guy will love her. And that's the fantasy. <laughs> the fantasy yeah. is That girl. is the unattainable <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> the, the girl can be a human being instead of like perfect manic pixie dream and a guy will still love her. Will that, still love you. Yeah. Wait, I just said that and then I took it in and now I'm sad. Yeah, <laughs> no, and it's like maybe one day that could happen yeah and we don't know for sure we but don't it's possible season five charlie's like um someone i'd fall around a party for two hours and they care about me for the first 20 seconds and then uh-huh. they would hate me for another <laughs> hour uh-huh. 19 minutes hour 59 minutes <laughs> <laughs> look at that math girl no, yeah re- that was actually hard i messed I'm, up the first time no, i mean queen. i feel like marnie like if i was marnie and i had dated and charlie was like my first love yeah and then you see charlie like this like that would probably be hot because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, he's so different. And everything that yeah. Marnie hated about him is different now. Yeah. Like totally. even when they're like dancing and she's like, you've gained weight. And he's like, that's rude. And she's like, no, it's nice. Like Wait. I'm seeing you not care or like I, not care about other people. I need to talk about that. I literally wrote this in my notes. I love that scene so much because she's like, you've gained weight. And he's like, that's like mean. You shouldn't say that. And she's like, no, like you just like you don't it looks like you don't care about what people think anymore and it's like supposed to be a romantic moment or something but i'm like that's actually still really mean to say (laughs) 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 it's like like if a girl said that to me in high school i would kill myself (laughs) it's actually still like not so nice pretty bitchy if any line (laughs) of that scene was said to me it would break me it would break (laughs) me yeah (laughs) no Um, but it is true like everything about him is different and the travis kelsey physicality that he has I've never encountered in real life because I live in Brooklyn and mm. hang out with comedians. But I think I would be very attracted to. Ooh, yeah, because there's only twinks right now in Brooklyn. Totally, yeah. Yeah, it's a twink year. It's, it's a like, twink year. Have you ever seen that thing? <laughs> it's a twink year. But wait, both of you are like, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> like, well, have you seen that thing about how, like, according to the economy, like, the length of women's skirts changes like mm. when, when there's like a recession or something like the skirts get longer and when it's like a good economic era the skirts get shorter of i course. think it's like that with twinks like there's like a, mm. a according to the economy it can be a twink year or it can be like a <laughs> Travis Kelsey year. Yeah, yeah 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 and Food we're in expensive. a twink recession i can't wait to tiktok clip that <laughs> 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 oh my god um fuck mary you go um i think fuck season five charlie i really he is so hot in this setting. he's sexy yeah and like yeah i get what you mean is of course like it's fun to date i've never dated an addict but like that could be fun for someone um <laughs> for maybe for five seconds and then i think i would date season one and kill season wait but i think owning an app could be really interesting i feel like you would love someone who owns an app yeah so actually i'm gonna kill season one charlie and then marry season three Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would fuck s- college like Oberlin, and then I would marry app owner. Hello, we can mm. have like a huge fridge. Um, with that <laughs> kind of app, with app money. Imagine <laughs> we have an island in the kitchen, and then yeah, I'd have to kill Panic in Central Park, Charlie. I think I would fuck Panic in Central Park, Charlie. I think I would marry app Charlie, and I think I would kill season one charlie whoa okay you know me i know you yeah yeah well i just think that there i think there's something very sexy about him when he has the app because he still has all of liberal arts charlie aspects but suddenly he has this new sort of like self-possession his boundaries he has boundaries (laughs) and he like doesn't need marnie so much oh my gosh when a guy doesn't need me that's what oh. <laughs> yeah. That's Whoa, amazing. your eyes just rolled <laughs> 360 style. Yeah, they did a flip. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love that. Yeah, I mean, okay. The thing that's interesting about this episode is that, like, I I forget what the line is, but it's basically like for five seasons everybody kind of hates marnie because she's never experienced anything and Mm -hmm. she has like no grasp on like the real world Mm -hmm. and finally this one day she lets herself experience like more in one night than she's let herself experience in her entire time in new york city where like she's experiencing getting robbed she's like stealing a boat Mm. she's like cheating on like whoever like her her husband (laughs) she's cheating on her husband like like she's just doing so many things that normal marnie wouldn't and so we she's see using a rando's towel 
She's using okay. a rando style. Literally, like, normal Marnie would be like, okay, well, I'm not showing you, like, the towel, but she instead, There's like, not here. enough duck. Yeah. yeah. And now she's using a random towel with stains yeah. on it. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a coming of age. It's a real coming of age. And I do like, there's a couple like elements of her being like, I'm 25 and a half. Like there's that sort of so motif. Funny. Oh, that's what it is. And she's like, I've experienced so much in just a few years. And all she experienced was woman. like, yeah. yeah. And like all she has experienced is like breaking up with her college boyfriend and marrying and a marrying random band Jesse. guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but. Well, I think a real crux of this episode is that Marnie's whole thing is that she's like, I'm changing. I'm marrying a guy. I'm checking this off my list. Yeah. I'm like, I'm experiencing my creative growth through music. And then you look at Charlie, who someone's actually gone through so much crazy growth in her time apart yeah. in a way that Marnie actually hasn't had any like actual yeah. change herself. Mm-hmm. And she has this big realization being like, oh, I thought I was this growing person, but I actually kept falling back into my old patterns and yeah. look at my ex who's like completely shifted her life fundamentally. Even if it's not for the positive, they've actually gone through incredible mm-hmm. change and now yeah and i think that we not to not to bring it to this place but i feel like we all have a moment or something when you'll meet someone or you're t- you'll talk to someone mm. and it'll put like your own life in perspective where you'll be like either in a positive or a negative way like whoa i have not experienced that much like i've lived i'm sheltered now or i've been doing this one pattern for a lot of my life or something and that's, I think, a really universal experience, especially if it's like someone you used to know and you see how crazy their life has gotten or how different they are. And you like think about all the ways that you're different, but also all the ways that you're the same. And I feel like we really saw Marnie mm. go through that. Like what could be more of a like serious wake up call moment than this guy that like she left and she got no explanation. And it was this like watershed moment in her life. And then he's back. And he's changed more than anybody in the entire show has changed. Like, she almost didn't recognize him. She almost didn't recognize him. He, he's got that new ass voice. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> when he says right? <laughs> um, and I mean, that I think is also sort of a large scale discussion in girls, like a large scale arc in girls is the fact that a lot of these characters don't go through a lot of growth, mm-hmm. that they're like stuck in these same patterns and. Like, that's the famous scene of, like, Shosh kind of, like, yelling at the girls at her um, engagement party or whatever. Well, this is why everyone wants to be a Shosh. Yeah, of course, because she's the one that... She's the... Like, I think we hear this constantly from people that they're like, I love... Or I feel like I'm most a Shosh, and I love Shosh the most because she's the only one that grows. Yeah. Like, that's constantly, like, a theme. Do you think we finally want to grow? Like, the people 10 years ago don't care about growth in the way we care about it now. I do feel like our generation in general has a special focus on like self optimization, but I think it's like related to like late stage capitalism vibes and like social media and like the analytics of growth being so accessible. Totally. But there's this really quantifiable, like I feel like I think about this sometimes. Like I, I obviously everybody grows like people throughout history, like over your life you grow, but I feel like, there's this weird meta aspect to it right now where like everyone I know is actively all the time like thinking about how they're growing as they're growing. Like when they have an experience that's formative, they're already thinking to themselves, oh, I'm having a formative experience right now. Mm. I can feel myself growing and changing. And like there's this like meta, I don't know, there's this meta aspect to it that I think is detaching or alienating from yourself. And I wonder if other generations or older generations thought about it that way too or if it was more like reflective right well I feel like it's such a trend that like people our age are like I'm so much more self-aware and reflective than like my parents like my mom literally doesn't know she's like that Mm -hmm. whereas like you kind of know how you are but I really do think it's because we like grew up online having to present who we are yeah so it's like we have to be able to like recognize who we are and then present it Mm -hmm. in a post format like I mean we all had Facebook when we were 11 like so we were like already thinking about our life through the lens of how it's being perceived by others. Whereas I feel like people before us maybe didn't have so much pressure to like show what is happening in real time. Yeah, right? no, totally. Well, it's like the self as a product and stuff. And I do feel like all of the, I mean, they're millennials famously, but I feel like <laughs> that is like a huge thing with all the girls and girls. And especially with Hannah too, is that she is like, so constantly looking at herself from above and being like 
I'm this girl. I'm 25. I'm a 25 year old in Brooklyn. This is my life. Like, this is what the arc of my life is going to be. Everything that I'm experiencing is this part of my story, which is also like a classic writer thing, too. Right. It's like her doing coke to say she's done to say she's done it. Like everything she does is to say that she's done it. And I think that also is maybe what is so shocking for Marnie about Charlie is that he really is this different kind of person. Like, yeah. And especially the person that he is now. Like, that is a type of person who is living in a type of way that is so different from, like, if Hannah was living like that, she would be blogging about it. Like, yeah. she would be like, can you believe I have a garbage bag <laughs> on my window? Like, yeah. my life is so <laughs> crazy. And I think that there is that aspect of the new Charlie that is probably very, like, shocking to Marnie or really jolts her out of this sort of uh, cycle that her life is in. Literally. Whoa, that was y- a beautiful point. You know what's crazy is, like, So the very end of the episode is Marnie getting into bed with Hannah and Fran. And that is like a reoccurring thing at the start of like the first three seasons. We always cut to Hannah in bed with somebody else. And I think like, I wonder if Lena, like when writing that was like, this is finally Marnie getting to be like the Hannah character that's like fucking up and like ending up in bed like, crawling into whatever like it's almost like a parallel of like finally we get to see marnie act like a hannah or something totally Mm. totally and it really is this like this i wrote this in my notes too like this parallel to season one or also i feel like in season one it was like charlie and marnie where this couple and hannah was getting into bed with them either literally or like you know uh figuratively Mm -hmm. and now the roles have switched and it is like marnie is having her sort of like coming of age moment and she's getting into bed and yeah it really it's a very full circle episode in general like there's obviously the charlie of it is very much a reference to season one and it really feels like it's i don't know like a very um full circle moment yeah i mean this is a show about college friends like that's the forefront of it all so like to end the episode with like friendship being the kind lie of all it's so defining for what our 20s really looks like yeah like it's like you're going back to your friends that's your family it's your chosen family and she's able to get into bed with hannah even after so much even after her marriage like it's her marriage ending so she what she chose to be her family she knew was never her family and Mm -hmm. now she's going back yeah Yeah, it's really a beautiful thing i literally wrote in my notes yeah i wrote in my notes that the moral of this episode is being 25 and a half And I think (laughs) literally and it's literally true. Like, I feel like this episode is such, you know, as the show is as a whole. But this episode is such an encapsulation of like being in your 20s. And like, Mm -hmm. yeah, like the friendship of it and the sort of confusion of it and the delusion of it. And this like yearning for this different kind of life than the life that you have. And this wake up call of realizing that the life that you have isn't what you wanted. And it's like, it's all so in it. And I. Like, it really does feel like a movie, and it feels like this movie that encapsulates so many of these little moments and emotions that I think are very universal to being in your 20s. And it's a very interesting part of the show as well, because when we first start to show off, the characters are the same age as the actors themselves. But now we're at a place where um, Allison Williams is 27, and she's playing a 25 mm. and a half year old who's actually like a 27 year old who has like a really successful career and has yeah. so many things happen to her, is mature in so many ways. In a way where she has to like kind of take a back step in her life to be able to play Marnie still. That is so interesting. I always think about that with Broad City just because it's like they're playing these like little rascals that can't get their shit together. <laughs> but it's like Abby and Alana <laughs> are literal girl bosses like running, writing and starring in a TV show. And they're in charge of like all these people's like cre- like they have so much responsibility. And they're like, yeah, let me write for a character that has no responsibility yeah. and doesn't grow. And it's like they're totally. actively growing. Like no wonder by season five. They're like, I think we have to end this. Yeah. And I know so many people like that. And I've felt that in different ways. Like when I'm writing essays, when I'm writing other stuff like all of the stuff that I think can feel interesting like especially when you're crafting a story like you're drawing from parts of yourself that are like old or when you were undeveloped or when there was stuff Mm -hmm. that you didn't know because that's what you have to that's where you have to put yourself in order to like build an arc or a narrative but I think it is a really strange experience for like anybody who's telling a story like that because you Mm -hmm. have to like regress yourself like you have to put yourself in the shoes of like before you knew something you have to constantly be like digging up these like old stories or these old like ignorances and that kind old of stuff. Old ways of seeing yourself. Even. Old ways of yeah. seeing yourself. And I feel like that's a problem that so many like showrunners have where like 
you start off writing the show about what it's like to be like a shithead, a 22 year old shithead who doesn't know anything. But by the time you're writing it, you're like a famous, successful, responsible, like 27 year old or something. I mean, it's even like, like, I just remember like Parks and Rec. It's like at one point it's like, well, Leslie Nope has to become a senator. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like it started small town, but it's like this girl is such a girl boss and she has so many like heroic moments that like serially speaking, like we have to, Mm. we have to make her in charge of a mountain now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's blurry what that show what happened there um <laughs> yeah no one knows actually yeah <laughs> and there's no, no way to knows. find out yeah um i think it what's so interesting about marnie is that marnie is always using hannah as a like somebody to compare herself to Mm -hmm. as a way to like deflect from her own self-reflection she's like i actually have my shit together because look at jessa or look at hannah they're so much more fucked up than me i have my shit together and it's only in this episode when she's like breaking up with desi that we hear for the first time marnie say like i have a lot i need to work on yeah like for five seasons she's never been like i have something i need to change about myself. yeah she's always like you guys need to catch up to me like i have my shit together and then Desi's like, you're going to get murdered, which is one so of the best funny. lines ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait. So let's dive into Desi and Marnie of it all. The, the episode, start, yeah. of course, starts with them in a fight. Mm-hmm. The wall still not up. The wall still not up. So I don't know if you've seen the last few episodes right before. This. I'm I'm out. It's been a while. So Des, so Marnie lives in the Lower East Side in a studio and Desi. Chinatown even. Yeah. And Marnie's like, we need more space. And Desi's like, I'll install a wall around the bed um, <laughs> to make it a one bedroom. <laughs> and Marnie's like, fuck He's saying you. build the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Not Desi being build a wall. <laughs> and Marnie's kind of Democrat style. Like, um, I prefer if you didn't. And why don't you ask me? And so I think they're probably, there's still tension there, but. Marnie's clearly mad. Desi hasn't really acknowledged, like, or honored why Marnie is upset with him. And instead is just trying to, like, play music and, like, charm his way out of it. And she's like, you need to respect that I am having these feelings. Mm -hmm. And until you do, like, I have to get away from you. She recoils from his touch. She's so annoyed. She's like, I have to get out of here. She goes on the subway. He says he's going to kill himself. He says he is (laughs) so drama. And she's like, no, you're not. This whole episode, by the way, I was like, Marnie is killing it like there's just so many moments where she i'm like get him like he's like i'm gonna kill myself and she's like you're not gonna kill yourself you're a narcissist you're too obsessed <laughs> you're too obsessed yeah. with yourself you're not like stop whining. i will argue i think a wall would have helped in this situation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if they had space to kind of separate it would have really sure. helped she could go to the kitchen sink yeah exactly for a yeah. it would have helped her for a second also um, not to bring up I'm literally bringing up rips so much. (laughs) And by the way, if you didn't just watch the episode, it's the random guy in the UPS costume. um, That's like part of Charlie's posse. posse. (laughs) Yeah, he has like one speaking line. (laughs) And how many times you wrote rips in your note? (laughs) I wrote the first on my notes app for this episode. The first thing that I wrote was the name rips. And then later in the note in like I was doing like a bullet points of stuff to do with marnie and i put the name rips again just to make sure that i kept bringing him up as i am now this is a dream of every actor who's never booked a big role before but yeah. it's like, i have one line i'm gonna make it count make he it did count. it yeah i hope he's on instagram because i'm please. gonna make a clip of just us bringing up rips <laughs> make a montage and instant clap, clap post yeah. with <laughs> <laughs> this one's for you no and he carried he, he carried, carried this up but there's a part where like charlie's like say hi to rips and Marley's like, Rips, are you from West Side Story? And I was like, Marnie, like, you're being so funny. Marnie being so funny because it's like she's talking to four drug addicts on the street of Bushwick. They're literally like, you got to go do a cocaine deal tonight, bro. Yeah. And she's like, um, you're referencing the wrong musical. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, your name's Rips and you don't know that much about musical theater. Yeah, like, imagine getting upset with your boyfriend. You're like, I have to cool off. I have to walk around to warehouses of Bushwick. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that, that is like a crazy choice. Yeah. Her like grout fit so, <laughs> with her little sneakers. She looked beautiful. That's oh the God. other thing I was thinking. This Gorgeous. whole episode, like obviously when she's in the red dress, she looks amazing. Of course. But even when she's in her sweats with her hair up, no makeup on, she looks amazing. Her little messy bun. I'm like, wow. Well, that messy bun. Drake would have loved her. I'm like, if that happened to me, that's not what the subway no, would look like. It would not look like that. But for me. such an iconic imagery. So cool and it's ridiculous that there's that one we're like skipping ahead in time of course but like after they get all wet like after they fall in the water and they're on the subway 
there's that one shot laying like that the shot scene around the world the scream grab scene around the world of like her like her head on his shoulder on the subway it's the most beautiful picture that's the screen grab that launched a thousand like hey text to people's exes <laughs> literally it like we don't know how dangerous it was yeah like she didn't lena did not know what she was doing with i that. actually re- before and after tumblr yeah <laughs> we need a documentary kind of investigative journalism style yeah. of like what that photo's ripple effects yeah were. it's ripple effects no seriously like, we do not know about the implications <laughs> the international implications the consequences because i mean this whole episode is kind of a like text your ex episode literally right, so is. yeah it so is well i'm wondering i think it, if we're going to talk about charlie of it all it's like i think her hanging out with the drug dealers like she wouldn't usually do this but there's kind of an effect when you're hanging out with your friend who's on drugs or is like mm-hmm. so high energy it rubs off on you yeah it's like when your friend's going through a really crazy manic episode and you're like oh my god i'm having the most fun yeah. of my whole life it's like yeah She's kind of secondhand getting high. Totally. All my friends addicted to Adderall, but not telling me they're on Adderall. And I'm like, they are just so fun to talk to. Yeah. Like, I'm and to suddenly out. I'm feeling really focused. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, the I feel like the inciting incident of the episode is, or how we know Marty is going to act different or is about to do something mm. crazy, is when they're on the street and Marnie's kind of like pushing him away. And he, she's like, why would I hang out with you? Like, I'm going to put my headphones back on. And then she's like, I mean, her speaking so directly to Charlie is something she never did in season one, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like, she was like, I'm so annoyed with my boyfriend, but I'm not well, going to tell him. she's 25 and a half now. But now that she's 25 and a half, yeah, of course. Different. But the whole thing is like, you treated me terrible and you suck. And then like, I know I was kind of annoying because I'm 22, but fuck you. And then him being like, I know. I'm sorry. Like him immediately admitting mm-hmm. like, yeah, I had some missteps, but I was going through a really tough time because my dad committed suicide. Yeah. Marnie being able to hear that and like actively like change and totally. be like, my ears are open now. Yeah. It is Beautiful. so like. Well, I wonder how many times she practiced that speech. She said it totally like in her head. Of course. Over the years. And like, that's the thing too, is like, you know, like for two years, she was in the shower, like running Literally. through what she was going to say again and again She's and again. Like, this is the this is every person's dream, like to run into your ex who wronged you and to be able to say this and for her to be able to turn on a dime when he reveals this thing and to be like, wait, actually, that's horrible. Like, I'm so sorry that happened to you. That also is like so growth. Are you using the G word? You use the G word. I'm using the damn G word. Growth. growth 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 no it's so growth and it's very admirable like to be able to just in a moment and i think also it's a reminder that she loves charlie like that she yeah. loved charlie and that she still loves him the way i just got chills when you said that <laughs> I'm, I'm smelling grilled pizza right now can i talk about one thing Please. i'm still hopping all over the place here and i'm sorry but i want to just spend a little bit of time talking about charlie's humble life <laughs> Humble, <laughs> humble life chest tattoo yeah it's major it is who cool. did it i didn't see that you didn't when okay. they're laying in bed it's when they're laying in bed he has like a chest piece that says humble life it's so we're the millers <laughs> <regrets. No regrets. laughs> yeah. i was literally thinking to myself like what was the writer's room like for Charlie's chest tattoo? Like, what and now we're, we're back. <laughs> what is the writer's room like for Charlie's chest tattoo? Can we call the arts department and be like, what happened? No, like we, I would love to do some investigative journalism and be like, what was on the whiteboard? What were <laughs> all of the ideas for what his chest tattoo could be? Well, I, I want the vulture top yeah, 10 literally. list of tattoo ideas for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking right away that there was this guy in my high school who had his own name tattooed on his forearm. Like, his whole oh. forearm was, like, a cursive tattoo of his own name. Just remember. <laughs> Just in case he forgets. I've always wanted R and L. For right and left. For right and left. Yeah. Because yeah. I have right left dysphoria. I don't have... I don't know my right and left. It's why I don't know how to use a key. <gasps> Well, what about... They're so hard. I, don't do that I to do, me. That's but actually then really I ableist to do it to both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I am being problematic with a capital P. This yeah, episode. this is a rough-ass episode for our careers. The um, American Idol bleep is going to be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be everywhere. Um, but yeah, I just loved it. And it's like, really, you should look up a picture afterwards of his humble life chest tattoo. Just put it on the wall. We should put I'll it on screen the wall. grab it and put it on the wall, yeah. It is amazing. It's kind of, I think, one of the best sex scenes in all girls, too. Because mm-hmm. you really build up to the... And it's so tender. Yeah. It's very it tender. It is so tender. Yeah. Like, her, like, taking off, like, unhooking her hooking halter top of her red dress and, like, getting on top. Like, it's, it's beautiful. It's like, you watch it and you're like, she's home. 
Oh and after yeah. Italian dinner, I'm like, I am impressed. By <laughs> <the way. laughs> I, think, I think that Italian was filmed dinner. at John's, that place we went to on the first day of the year. You think? Mm. <gasps> oh my God, I guess we've been to the restaurant. Wow. We got spaghetti there and everything. We got spaghetti. We got, did we? Yeah, and Melissa McCarthy's picture was on the wall. And we got to be asked about it for wow. 40 minutes and no one had to answer. I her. asked the person, <laughs> like, you hey, ask? was she was she here? <laughs> Well, definitely. And right? he was like, I don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 he made me seem like I was crazy to ask that. And I'm like, well, wouldn't you get this every day? I was about to say, like, I was going to say you're crazy to ask that. Like, obviously, it means that she's been there. But there's this cafe in Park Slope where the only decoration in the whole cafe is a huge framed photograph of Norm MacDonald. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I like, ob- like, obviously, I asked and I was like, hey, what's with this like framed photograph of Norm MacDonald? Like, does he own like did he work here? Like, does he own the place? Did he own the place or something? And the person was like, oh, no, like, we just really like him. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome it, no it's amazing i'll send you the location because i mm. love it there so much but it could be a, that oh, with most the bar McCarthy. we're going to tonight um and only follows they follow one person on instagram it's carly simons the yes oh i carly carly just saw no, carly that. simons carly the simon they, the only person i follow on instagram yeah. that's so hot yes, that's right guys we're gonna be at sickness <laughs> tonight <laughs> <laughs> come join us um well that scene and then so the scene where they're looking at each other on the subway after the lake is like i think like etched into all our hearts for eternity yeah no i mean it's literally like i said the screen grabs heard around the world screen grabs, oh my god i yeah. mean allison williams didn't say a word and she did the most acting she's ever done in her this life is episode i think with the least amount of words in it yeah. if i was to argue but it actually says the most it says the most by the way it says by the way it says the most well she had to learn a lot too for this water scene i know i keep bringing it up but she first off opening your eyes underwater and doing that when acting i in was a heavy watching dress, it i was thinking like she's opening her i would not open my eyes she in did her water. first stunt falling off a boat that's actually hard for a girl to do wow i love the movie the descendants with george clooney and shailene woodley and there's this one part where shailene woodley like jumps in the pool to cry because her mom's dying oh. and it's like Whenever Marnie was in the pool, I was like, she's she's having her Shailene moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny for Shailene to be your reference point for all actors in water. <laughs> I know. It's, for me, it's a way of water. Like, I know Alison Williams watched that movie. She's like, she knew exactly what was going she on. Knew she knew how hard exactly it was Exactly what to do. Is that That's Avatar? Like, Avatar, way of water. <laughs> were they really in the w- I They were it. in the water. He'd do water acting for like nine months. I thought it was like CGI. <laughs> no, Christopher Nolan's really talented. That's amazing. I bet a woman well, yeah, would I be know. able to do cool stuff too if we gave her that much money. Totally. Sorry. If we I gave Alison Alice McCarthy, well, should Allison could have made way of water. She knows exactly how to act underwater. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> Quote tweet that. <laughs> um, Wait, I'm like, okay, should we do scene by scene now? Okay. okay. Do we even care about the vintage store? Well, like a little. Can we finish the Desi combo? Yeah. Oh, right. Let's finish Desi. Sorry, we've been getting no, no, sidetracked. No, okay. Um, so back to Desi Marnie. They have been fighting a lot. Marnie's just not really feeling like they're very compatible. And I think she says in this episode she always knew the marriage wasn't gonna work, but she wanted something to work for once, mm-hmm. which is so twenty five. She's like leading with hope. Yeah. God forbid. Delusional. Delusional romantic. But she she sees, like, Charlie's heroine and is like, okay, I got to go deal with my real life, too. Yeah. And so she walks back. Desi is on the steps of their apartment in what I assume, like, waiting for her to get back. And she says, I don't want to do this. And Desi says, do what? And she says, be married to you. Wow. You're an actress. When you said that to me, I felt... Like, for a second, I was like, wait, were we married? <laughs> <laughs> like, and my heart broke. I also think I botched it. I think he says, where were you? Or- where were you? Where's your Where's your shoes? Where's your ring? Which is like, he's never been that observant before. Yeah. And he No, says, he's truly seeing her for the first yeah, time. Yeah, literally. And you know what? His when senses she's, are heightened. When she says, I don't want to be married to you. And he's just like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess go do what you he need to do. He goes, remember to hope. It's like he would have never said that up until now. Whenever yeah. Marnie is mad, he's like, no, oh my God, Hanson needs like going full, like crying in the street actor mode. Yeah. But it's like he knows it's not working either. And like as soon as she's the one to say it, he's like, yeah, you're fucking right. This isn't this isn't good. Totally. Yeah. 
Oh my god, it's like Sarah Ann in Love is Blind. <laughs> Did you guys watch Love is Blind? <laughs> I'm not familiar. <laughs> is this new season stuff? Is it okay to mend? I'm going to. I think to. it's okay to talk about okay, Dive into so it. Okay, so Love is Blind, a couple, a couple finally leaves the pod. But this guy was talking to Sarah Ann. Um, his name's Jeremy. And he picked this other girl. I think her name's Vanessa. And they left the pod. They went on their like, honeymoon with all the other couples. The day, first day gets, or the first week he gets back. He's gone till 5 a.m. And he's talking to the other girl in the pods, Sarah Ann. <gasps> he said, it's all innocent. You have me on fine friends. Nothing to worry about. <gasps> I was at the bar the whole time. She goes, I actually checked your fine friends. And you were in the parking lot at Sarah Ann's house. Then she's like, I can't do this anymore. Now, after the show's wrapped, Sarah Ann and Jeremy are together. <gasps> yeah. So she, Clementine, Marnie. Can I just say I was not acting like I wasn't doing No, a bit. it's beautiful. Like, I had heard all of those names for the first time. And when you got to the end, I was shocked. Well, and this, <laughs> this is making me think that it's like Cl- Sarah Ann and Jeremy are not going to work. Just like. Yeah. Cl- like Marnie entered her relationship with Desi. By separating Clementine out of the equation. Yeah. Clementine, but if she had fine friends, she'd be checking that. And goes, oh, you're at Marnie's house again. And it's later than 5 a.m. You can't process music that long. Yeah. She goes, Bessie goes, it's all innocent. It's all innocent. No, it's not. I bet Sarah Ann and Jeremy will get married. And I bet it will backfire on their asses. And I bet that Sarah Ann is going to be walking through the Bushwick one day. And she's going to see her ex who left Literally. her. And that they're going to have an amazing day together. But then she's going to find out that he has a heroin needle. And Sarah Ann's going to get murdered one day, by the way. Can you guys imagine if Charlie was actually just diabetic? <laughs> <laughs> is he the first i don't want to be insensitive but is he the first person to gain weight on heroin right isn't it the whole trope it's like you get really skinny on heroin that's true yeah. it's interesting but you know what different things affect Let's, different people in different ways <laughs> it's definitely interesting I really um, went against the grain with that one. Well, he's different. <laughs> yeah. He's different. He's not trying to please heroin. Exactly. He doesn't need to change for everyone anymore. Mm, exactly. Yeah. In the way that, do you remember the wedding episode where Hannah finds out that Desi's been engaged for seven times and Fran is like, well, of course Marnie knows. And Hannah's like, Marnie definitely doesn't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like we get the like conclusion of that idea in this final mm. scene when Marnie is like the beginning of our relationship, I always knew this, this and this were true, but I wouldn't accept it. Yeah. And here I am like explaining that I knew all along that this was the scenario and I didn't, I wanted to turn a blind eye to it, but I'm facing it now and I'm realizing yeah. that that's wh- why we're not going to work. A relationship is built on a lie yeah. and like bad vibes. Totally. And like, I feel like such a big part of that is like, Again, like, Marnie is this character who has an element of, like, delusional, mm. like, romanticism to her. Like, she has this picture of what she wants her life to be. She wants to be this type of person. And her whole relationship with Desi was, like, her deluding herself. And, of course, whenever you're deluding yourself, you know a little bit that that's what you're doing. And that you're, like, stepping into this life that you want so badly. And you want to convince yourself that you can be this kind of person. And I feel like part of the big lesson of this episode was that it was almost like a microcosm, like a concentrated microcosm of this pattern that she has, where she, like, stepped into this other life for a second. Like, she's tired of her life with Desi. She's doing this delusional thing again where she sees this glimpse of, like, a life that she could have, this, like, beautiful, romantic, crazy life. And she steps into it, and she, again, lets herself live this fantasy and this delusion. And then it's, like, shattered at the end when she sees that Charlie was on drugs the whole time and he has this heroin needle. And it's like this moment that shatters this delusion. And I feel like it almost shatters her, uh, this character trait that she has in general. Like, I think she has this moment where she's like, wait, I'm deluding myself. Mm. Like, I can't do this anymore. Like, this thing that I do isn't working. This, like, desire to to live a fantasy. It's not real. And I feel like it's this, le- this lesson that she learns that she then applies to this wider fantasy she was living at with Desi. And don't you love it when she arrives home? It's amazing. And she's like you have a lot of serious things you have to change about yourself, but that's no longer my problem. Yeah. And she takes that step back. Yeah. It's chills. It's you chills. just gave me chills saying yeah. that oh, on the mic. And that's why you're the internet princess. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting chilly we're in this studio. Chilly. We thought the lights were going to make it hot. hot? I'm cold. Burr. I'm yeah. burr mode. <laughs> um, well, it's, I think it's also a really interesting parallel that's like, sometimes you need to have, a comp- like, it, it's always interesting where it's like, Cheating's never good, of course, but um, 
people sometimes need to teach us to know what the comparison yeah. is and like what they have and what they don't oh have. you're about to piss my mom off no i know <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sorry, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> no, like cheating is bad. You shouldn't do How it. How long would she have been with Desi if she didn't find Charlie that That's day? the thing is like, yeah, cheating is bad. It's you should never do it. But whenever cheating happens, it happens for a reason. She did it for. Mm-hmm. And you know what? She cheated in the right way because she immediately went home. and was like, it's over. Yeah, totally. Like her ring was stolen. And that's actually a conspiracy. Some yeah. people think that Charlie actually planted the thief. Yeah. Um, I don't you know think Charlie planted? I Wait, want, what? I deep Sorry, deep I said, I yeah. Went Reddit, <laughs> like, I went what? through Reddit and people had conspiracy theories that like actually Charlie really manipulated this day. Like he had a feel. He kind of knew where Marnie's grounds were was one thing. He planted the boat. He also planted the the thief the thieving at all so he could get money to sell for more heroin. Now these people are gaming too much. That is the craziest thing I've That's ever heard. That's what Reddit heard. has to say. <laughs> I just want to say Evan's always like, I want to play a gay assistant. I want to play a gay assistant. And it's like, <coughs> Evan, you actually have so much range. You could also play the twink robber in this episode. Yeah, <laughs> I always so said true. that. That's what I've been saying all week is I could finally <laughs> play him. If I got tired of playing the gay assistant, you I could finally play the twink gun. robber. Yeah, when he's shaking. Slow. And I actually, like, this is not a joke. I was thinking to myself, what's his story? Like, I really? We need a bottle episode, episode about him. Episode him. Of him and his story. This because is, like, very improv. He was incredibly kind of compelling. He was so compelling. He like, was, his eyeballs he's just were a kid. compelling. He was shaking. I was like, oh, what? Like, what is his life story? It is surprising Marnie didn't get murdered there. Like, yeah. Desi was right. She's like, robbing still happens? Like, yeah, Marnie, yeah, bitch. Marnie. And you know what? Still the happens. foreshadowing the first scene about Maria from, um, uh, West Side Story. I was yes. like, this is foreshadowing Marnie's death. <laughs> and then she lived. <laughs> you thought she was gonna I die. thought she was going to get shot down by the robber because <laughs> he was a jet or whatever. Can you imagine if they just killed Marnie? <laughs> <laughs> it is so West Side Story to have a knife and then there's a gun. Lena yeah. Dunham's like, y'all are mad. Well, I'm going to make her change hearts and minds and then I'll kill her off like you wanted and you'll reap. And then you'll really feel bad. You'll really feel bad. Um, Wait, last thing I was going to say... Um, about Desi? About Desi. D-Dog? I actually lost my thought, but you have a point. And what you have a point. I, ju- <laughs> I, just, I just could tell that you had a new path to then forge, <laughs> and I want to open up the floor. That is such a good question. I think I've, like, moved through. I'm Now I'm having to go to my B notes, well, I which will is, like, say, good needle drop. <laughs> good needle drop, and we really skipped over something really important. Yeah, what? which is Bella. No, we can't <laughs> skip over Bella. Oh yeah, so <laughs> is He's that like, a Bella. Twilight reference? That's what I, I literally thought. Is he referencing Twilight? But does he like would not watch Twilight? No, I think it's like Italian. But like yeah. that line is like the line heard around the world. It's like we have like I, I think I'm a voice of a generation. It's like and Bella. And Bella. <laughs> I really want that to become a TikTok sound. You know how like the bodies, bodies, bodies. Rachel sent it like into Charlie XCX things like yes. popping up right now. We need a Desi like please. Desi Bella, if anybody <laughs> out there can make that happen. <laughs> well, I think that like Hannah Horvath's I'm a voice of a generation is for like girls like me. What Desi's Bella is for like dirtbag guys. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the guys same. Guys named Tony. <laughs> guys named Tony. Guys named Desi. Guys who wear a necklace. Like yeah. that is their like aspirational like fuck that's so me. Like that's real. You know. <laughs> Bella. Bella. You know what we have to dive into though wow. is ultimately Marnie's um stint as um say it sex worker. <laughs> <laughs> Mar um Marnie cosplaying as a sex worker named what? Magita Perez. Magita Perez. And when she first says it she puts like a little Spanish accent on it like she's like Perez. Well, I'm she like you straight your- style too which I think is crazy she goes Magita Megita Perez. It's like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's so. It's also like her hair's pin straight. She just went to dry bar. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not confusing no she one. She has a fresh blowout. I'm like, if she was gonna be a lesbian for one episode, it should have been that episode because that other girl was gorgeous. And they had an amazing little moment. They're both 25 and a half. Where Marnie's like, "How old are you?" And she's like, "I'm 25 and a half." And I don't even know what Mart like. I was like, I even was thinking to myself, like, what does this mean for Marnie? Like, what is she realizing? But she realizes something. I think she realizes that 
when, so just before this scene, she's getting the red dress in the store and she's talking to the salesperson like so much has happened to me. I'm 25 and a half, by the way. Yeah. And like it's so like her being like, I'm so wise. I'm such a woman. And the salesperson is like, yeah, that makes sense. She says she's 25. She's recognizing like, oh, I'm still just a girl, too. Yeah. Like because cause totally. she can so clearly see in this other girl in the same way that she can see in Hannah and Jesse like you're a fucking mess. Yeah. She's now like. Oh, she just said the same line as me. Maybe I'm just as messy as every other 25 year old. Totally, totally. It's a looking in a mirror, except that girl is a real sex worker. (laughs) Yeah. Presumably also experiencing things that Marty can't imagine. Yeah. A real magical part of this episode is like, you know, anytime you're in a situation and you're like, I should have said that in that moment. You know what I mean? Marty says everything she should have said in that moment during this episode. Like when she gets $300 in cash, she's like, and I can't go above the 10th floor. I'm scared of heights unless I get $200. And I'm like, you don't remember my jeans. Another 100 on there. And that was so cute, by the way, when she's like, I'm scared of heights. That's like, I was like, oh, oh girl, you're a genius. She's so dainty. Well, for a long time, I don't do this anymore because now I'm a grown woman. But something 21. that you're <laughs> what, 24? <laughs> I'm 22 years old. <laughs> and I've outgrown this sort of childish little charade. But. What something you can do to get a guy to really like you. I feel like maybe this is like a Rachel Sennett tweet I saw when I was 18 or something, <laughs> or maybe I hallucinated that. But something you can do to get a guy to really like you is to be like, oh, I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> like when you're in his bed at night, oh, well. like to be like, oh, sorry, I'm actually really scared. Like I'm scared of the dark. And it's true. Like they love it every time. They're like, hey, don't worry. Like guys love it when you have a little fear. I mean, it's a classic like, let's see a scary movie. And it's like, oh my God, I'm going to be shy. I'm going to be really scared. But it is like Marnie goes bartering mode in a yeah. way I've never seen before. No, totally. Like, I'm like, there's so many moments that it's like, Marnie, like, who are you? You're being crazy, girl. Like to be like, I'm actually the 10th. Anything about the 10th floor, it's too high. I have a dress rental fee unless you want me to show up in jeans. I'm Brilliant. like, since when did you learn about like the history of sex work yeah. and like the the prices you could name? Yeah, yeah she made it up, Magita and the work. She saw him pull out that wad of cash, and she was like, "I can get a little more of that." I, well, she, and then she okay, and then we kind of crossed us off, and them on the street. Maury has six hundred dollars in cash. Charlie's being like, "That's not usually your scene," and she's like, "You don't know what my scene is." Yeah. And then we go into this amazing song called hair tied up. Yes, which if you listen to the lyrics really closely, you think it's it's a fun rappy song. Actually, they're kind of talking about growth in the moment. She's like, I can be whatever you need me to be in whatever moment you need me to be. And the guy's like, I love it when you grow is like par- actually part of the lyrics really? of the song, which is really awesome. Well, I literally put in my notes. It's like one of the best needle drops in the show. It's so fun. It's so fun. The music yeah. is so good in this episode. Um, and now we're kind of going to an Italian restaurant, I guess, that Amelia and I have been to before. They're feasting out. A guy's on yeah. an accordion. I have to say, it's not that expensive there. It's pretty affordable. <laughs> I was literally about to say, like, you have $600 and you're ordering spaghetti. And yeah, they're like, <laughs> let's get garlic bread for the table. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Red Perfect. Um, That's, and it's a beautiful, there's so many beautiful sequences in this. There really are. Yeah, it's like, very evocative. This is the highest point. I like, this is when you really, like, see them really coming together. Mm-hmm. It's this kind of moment where, like, there's a little bit of wine, a little bit of food. They got the drink. They're like dancing. Yeah, literally. They're yeah. dancing. It's like, okay, now here we go all over again. There's a the love that we used to have yeah. for each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have, <laughs> I'm thinking like, have you ever had like a whirlwind night with an ex? Or it doesn't even have to be like an ex-lover, but like somebody that you knew for a long time growing up and maybe didn't see for years and then you like reconnected and you're like, oh, it's just like old times. Well, before we started recording, I was literally talking about being back home in Toronto where I was hanging out with my ex-boyfriend because we are friends. But and it's interesting to be friends with an ex, too, because it's like you really are friends. But then you get this glimpse into this like life of this person that you used to share your life with so completely. Mm -hmm. And it's so weird. Like you have moments where you feel so close to them, but also moments where you're like, whoa, there's actually this chasm. But like this like unknowable distance between us where I used to know everything about you now it's so different and I was telling you guys about how he started a new band and I went to the house show of like his first performance with his new band and that was already like you know so there's always so much wrapped up in that like it was like a big deal for him there's always so much wrapped up in a, in a house basement. y'all house bands show. guys know you're getting it <laughs> totally there's uh, the politics are crazy <laughs> um and he was like, play- I was like sitting 
on like a chair in someone's kitchen and watching him like play songs that were like about me and like about when we were dating and like the songs he would sing to me while we were together and it was like extremely emotional and like evocative and crazy and I like had to go to the bathroom to cry but also I was so happy for him because like he had changed so much to get to this point that he could do that like he used to think he would never be able to play music in front of people and sorry this is getting real as fuck but it it is like this there was this chasm between like this pain that you feel but also this like happiness for this person that you love Mm -hmm. and then of course as I was telling you I left and then I stood across the street and like it was like a movie like there were like cars whizzing by I was like across two lanes of traffic and I watched as he left the house holding hands with a like a girl that I'd never met before and again it's like I didn't want to be with him but it was just this feeling of like you feel the enormity of the time that has passed or something, right you know and it really is that feeling of like you feel so old or you feel just like that there was this version of you that existed with this person that is now dead or like that is totally gone yeah and I think it is just like when you have one of those nights with somebody that you used to know you just really I think the thing that is most affecting about it to me is you get like a really palpable reminder of like time passing like you can really just feel Mm -hmm. it in a really quantifiable way yeah it's crazy to think about well time isn't often we're always like time's going so fast we usually don't have those markers of reflection but like experience like that just truly reminds you of like what was and like really brings you into a headspace like where you were at a certain point yeah and that's the time where you really realize like what has changed in your life how long time has passed since then. It, and I, I'm sure it's really happening to Marnie in this moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it, because I like move cities every few mm. years, it's so interesting because I kind of leave like an old version of me. Uh-huh. And then it's like, oh, like those people like will like follow me on Instagram and we don't like talk day to day. Like yeah. we follow each other. Yeah. But it's like, I forget that like five years ago I had these like dreams and goals and now I'm getting them. I'm so wrapped up in like what I want now. But then like these people from my past who I haven't seen in years will like see an Instagram story and be like, oh my God, you're getting all like everything that you were obsessed with five years ago. You're like doing something. Oh my God. Something that happened to me recently that made me cry is that a completely random person that I've never met before messaged me on instagram with like a photo in toronto like it, all elementary school kids can like enter this poetry contest that's like then like published in like a book that isn't no one sees but it goes out to like kids who are in elementary school and this random person who i, I have never met who like didn't go to the same school as me or something was looking at his old copy of Aww. that book and he saw my name in it because I won this contest when I was four years old in kindergarten, like this like <laughs> writing contest. And just like this little thing I wrote when I was four was in this book. And he said he messaged me and he was like, I have no idea who you are, but I got this weird feeling. And I just wanted to like look up the kid who wrote this. And it's so amazing that you're a writer now. Oh, like you, even when oh you were four. Oh, my God. Can you believe that happened to me? Like, yeah, he was like, you're, he literally sent this text. He he has no idea like he's never met me before he doesn't know me but he was like i just feel like your four-year-old self would be so proud of you why am i crying no i cried i was like yeah (laughs) how'd you learn how to write and compete (laughs) at four it was a it was a poem and and i'll read you a line of it because i know it by heart of course it was about fall and it this is a poem days are shorter sunsets long let's get ready for the fall Oh, oh my god, girl. why am I I'm <laughs> fully sob. <laughs> and um Don't mind my eyes. Like, that was your poem. How bad were the other ones? <laughs> no, that's beautiful. I think that's a really good poem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good I poem, think, Evan. Sorry. I think you're gonna want me to go ahead and bleep that because I've read your post breakup yeah. poetry and it's not <laughs> And maybe people maybe you don't want people to know how cruel you really are. Yeah. So. No, I'm okay with that. Okay, Amelia, leave that in. <laughs> Um, are there any anything else we need to dive into? Uh, we do kind of have to start wrapping up. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. Of course. Because I was looking at my notes app, and again, we're approaching the C tier of the stuff that I put in my notes app. But I was thinking, um, I just want to share this. I was thinking about how this is like such, this is like, again, the episode that I feel like everyone watches and is like, what's my ex doing? Like thinking about your ex. And I thought about like, you know, those future memes of like future texting. And it's like a text you would send to your ex. And so I just sort of brainstormed this. 
um, watched season five uh, episode of Girls called Panic in Central Park. Made me think about how you were my girl and I panicked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a poem. <laughs> Wait, so, I'm gonna make that meme. Yeah, yeah. That that's yeah. shareable. That is shareable. That's content. Baby. Yeah, that's yeah. content. Maybe. That's just a little something I was cooking up. I um, I should be writing a book, by the way, right now. Yeah. I'm under contract, but I spent about 40 minutes on that <laughs> tonight. This is part of the pre-writing stage of writing totally the book. Ideating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think let's wrap it up. Let's do okay. rapid yeah. fire. Girl, Girl, get your, your Glock. Glock. It's, it's rapid, rapid fire time. time. No. Have you ever recoiled from a lover's touch? No. Do you think Charlie's been online stalking Marnie over the last few years? Uh, Like once or twice. Are you trying to please everyone still? Yes. You are my family. You know that? Yes. Duh. Have you ever pretended to have a job you don't? Mm, yes. Is that not your boat? It is not. If you fell in a lake, would you be chill about it? I would not because I'm scared of leeches. <sighs> shit yeah. because of um the chronicles of, or what's the what happens those leeches what, hey what are you oh talking about <laughs> and hey, what Patrick Harris you... was in the remake on Netflix <laughs> hey what could you possibly be talking about <laughs> you know have you ever rode the subway with wet hair <laughs> um yes um and there's like the baby eats a table <laughs> yeah chronicles of uh, hey, I think you, I think you had a bad dream <laughs> <laughs> it's Lemony it's Snicket. Lemony. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> would you chat on your, your? Would you cheat on your husband if this scenario presented itself to you? No. Wow. Do people get robbed anymore? They do. Do you need all your stuff? No, I don't. What's so fucking funny? I don't know. Why is everybody such a fucking disappointment, Rain? <laughs> uh, I don't feel disappointed in anyone. Oh. Do you ever feel like a ghost of yourself right now? Yes. Would you let Desi gaslight you? I would. <laughs> I for sure would. I would, yeah. Are you sad about the hope of the beginning? Yes. Actually, all the time. Aww. Yeah. But I also feel a joy and a satisfaction with how unexpected it all is. That's beautiful. And, and how much newness we can find in the things that we never saw coming. Okay. <laughs> you made me cry twice in one up <laughs> and let's say the word chills again <laughs> i'm hearing chills i'm noticing chills i'm noticing coming up. goosebumps yeah um wait it is so like mar a gaslight or desi gaslighting in the last scene like you're gonna end up murdered or whatever yeah. is so like yeah that would get me if i was 20 yeah but since i'm 25 it wouldn't get me so much and a half 25 yeah. and a half yeah um well, it's so the one clip that we posted of Adam and Hannah, it's the season four finale, I believe, where mm. Adam is like, me and Mimi wrote this are over, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and basically like begging for Hannah back. Yeah. And Hannah's like, no. Yeah. Every comment is like, I would have folded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I was just thinking it actually, I can't even imagine how much strength it would take for Hannah to be in that situation. But everyone's fucking growing. Everyone Everyone's is growing. growing. Like season no. one where all she oh, wanted was Adam. Like what? she would do anything for Adam. <laughs> <laughs> she would do anything for Adam. And then for her to reach a point where she realizes like, wait, this actually isn't good for me. I'd much rather date Fran. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we've all been there. Okay, well, last I think segment. Something so oh, magical sorry. about this show is um that it's really taught us a lot, I think. <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah and say that in so many different ways well, yes. but like it's nice to see like <laughs> well yes well it's cool to have um I, it's nice to put yourself in someone else's <laughs> shoes yeah. in this real way and like truly studying the text so deeply it's so like, deeply i'm kind of like oh i do have like we are having constantly having to put ourselves in other people's shoes and seeing what our problems are yeah. every single week and checking out on that and now to have something this close like marnie's whole episode mm -hmm. of like She's recognizing her pattern. She's overcoming her patterns. Like, yeah, come on. That is, I really, truly recognize the pattern this week, too. Yeah. I'm and watching this episode. I am not just saying this. Like, Lena, I hope you are listening. There are genuinely so many, like, scenes from girls or so many plot points in girls yeah. that genuinely, like, had a material impact on my life that, like, made me realize something about who I am or, like, made me, like, the scene where Hannah's mom is, like, you don't want to 
like it's tough being married to an odd man like you don't want to spend your life socializing him like a dog making the world a friendlier place that genuinely changed my life like had a material impact on Souls the types of, of relationships that i was in oh my god and well, it really like changes Lita's your favorite life. episode she's ever written really uh-huh and that makes sense yeah of course it's a and you would too and you would too if you wrote yeah, it she yeah she really wanted to go for something that was very movie-esque and like, yeah try to really bring it into this but like I mean, it is really, there is something to be said for these bottle episodes that Mm -hmm. she writes. I don't think there's a single bottle episode that everybody isn't like, that's one of my favorite TV episodes I've ever seen. Like, this girl knows how to write. Like, Beach House is so specific. The sit-in where it's like, she found out about Mimi Rose and it's all in that one apartment. Like, all of these standout episodes, One Man's Trash, people are always loving that one. Yeah, well, it's Lena Unleashed. Like, I feel like where Lena is like she shines as a writer in so many ways but i think her the thing that she is so exceptional at as a writer is her exploration of like relationships Mm -hmm. and i think that what these bottle episodes do is that they are just like character studies like she's sort of unburdened by like plot a little bit which of course she's also very good at writing but she gets to just do this one thing that she does so well which is these Mm -hmm. like complex and nuanced and crazy relationships between I wish people. she did high maintenance. Yes. I love her do only bottle ups. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. Totally. Jemima got to do high maintenance. Why couldn't Lena <laughs> Why be couldn't Lena? Yeah. Get her in the room. Please. Like, why don't we let her do more things? She should do everything. No, she is getting a lot right now. Though. Okay. She She's doing so much right life. now. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But if you have enough free time to come to our couch, girl, we'd love to have you. <laughs> Lena, <laughs> let's hang. Um, okay, we have to close out. This episode's so long. One more segment. That, that outfit, outfit in, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That's where we compare Brooklyn then versus Brooklyn now. Is there anything in this episode that you think couldn't happen? I think it's pretty timeless, but... It's timeless. I, I have some good ones. I think... Okay. First off, over to head earphones. This is not a good example, but we're really Bluetooth centered right now. Um, and those. Really you mean over the head earphones with earphones cord? With cord. Yeah. yeah. Or, I, well, I think I'm big on like wired ear pods. Ear pods, but you would never have these. I mean, I would don't look at us have, right now. Yeah. You like, would never have these Philips headphones never. from Amazon Prime, no worry. <laughs> no, no, I would never be wearing something like this. That's really true. No. I mean, also, of course, just the crazy style of the headphones like the angular like purple it's so it's maybe the most dated thing i've ever seen oh on the God, show what's like, marnie's head candy what's that skull candy skull candy, skull candy. So skull candy. yeah marnie's sneakers really stand out to me as like something that doesn't happen anymore mm-hmm. in this part of town yeah oh a hundred percent wait can you describe our sneakers so and you guys know which ones i'm talking about they're like high rise Con- high like rise high top period. they're like high top <laughs> but in a weird like it's like she's ready to hip-hop yeah no it's like a dance it's she's like ready a, to hip-hop it's like a hip-hop sneaker and then it's like yes um like sweatpants are thicker now <laughs> yeah, because of merch that culture type of sweatpants does not exist anymore like the, you like, couldn't find it you couldn't find i am dead serious you could not find it in a store like that type of sweatpants they're like thin material not tight like but like a little bit of a tapered leg yeah like waistband with a tie does oh, not exist anymore tie. i think she'd be wearing like brandy melville sweats name of a city over the butt Ooh. literally and like a i see her mad happy yeah. mad happy she's so mad happy she girl. would love <laughs> she would and you know what she'd have her a wall of bottle water bottle on her <laughs> a wall so um i think another thing is um Paying for drugs and cash. I mean, that's still popular, but we're so cash out. Apple culture. cash. Yeah. The thing that stood out to me was like the apple cash of it all. Getting robbed. She'd be like, I have nothing on me. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's so you true. You want my keys? Can I Venmo you? Yeah. <laughs> Um, she uh, might have an Apple Watch on her. Yeah, oh, she, she, she pulls out of the lake like, oh, no, I hope it. Oh, it is waterproof. It's serious. Oh, it <laughs> is. Of course it is. Yeah. The pro- I mean, the problem really is that it's just so timeless. Also, no drug yeah. dealers look like Charlie anymore. They're all twinks. Or like, <laughs> well, of course, not, we're in a twink era. We're in a twink era, of course. Because of the economy. Because of the economy, it would. Boys never- can't afford food to eat. <laughs> yeah. And they're getting so skinny. Well, I, everyone I know that in Brooklyn, all their drug dealers like are truly like trans women or twinks. <laughs> and that yeah. is amazing. And that is amazing. Amazing. That's a utopian society. Our Thank famous, God. our famous Instagram sketch twink <laughs> dealer proves it. <laughs> proves it. Um, is there any other good? No, it really is a timeless piece of TV. Except for that, I don't like that jean jacket. Sorry. Oof. Jean jackets stood the test of time for too long, in my opinion. 
Evan, every I, time I put on my jean jacket, rolls their eyes. Sometimes I'm even like, have I ever worn a jean jacket? No, they were so popular in 2016. And <laughs> yeah. then girls, I was like, I wore my first jean jacket in 2016. And then all these girls were wearing it all the way up until maybe 2020. And every single night they're going on a jean jacket, they're going on a jean and jacket. And Amelia's still wearing jacket. the damn thing. I stayed there she just loves it. Them <laughs> 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 Amelia's is timeless, but I'm just like, th- it's just too hard for me to look at a denim jacket because it's been so yeah. oversaturated. It's like, now we're doing leather jackets. Yes. Which the le- he would be wearing a leather jacket today. He'd be wearing like a mm. big leather jacket. Yeah, he really would be. But there's something about, I think there's just something about that archetype of guy. That, that is timeless. Him. That's always going to be wearing a jean jacket. The only that. thing now is they'd never get Julia whatever. What's her last name? Um, The, the blonde one. The blonde oh, Julia one. Garner. Also, they'd never bikes be, are still the same. They'd yeah. never be able to get <laughs> Julia Garner to play that role now. She left me on the side of the BQE. So funny. <laughs> so she. And she'd be riding a Revel. Yeah. A Revel motorcycle. <laughs> Not the, the fedi- downtrodden <laughs> lesbian. <laughs> poor thing. Oh, poor thing. She would have Uber too. She wouldn't have to walk. Yeah, you know what? She'd be like, I just had to drop, like, my entire paycheck on an Uber. Yeah. She went into debt. Well, do you guys know that there's... I know this well. If you have no money in your bank account, you can order one Uber with no money, and then you go into debt on the app, but, like, you can still go on that one Uber. Use a Klarna (laughs) it. And that's for you listeners out there in dire need. (laughs) Uh, It's a PSA. I know that from experience. (laughs) 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 <laughs> um, okay, well, we do have to wrap it up. I know this episode was longer than usual, but you have to understand why, right, guys? You got a champion well, yapper on the pod. <laughs> um, Rain, thanks so, so much for being on. Thank, thank you for you. having me. When we texted you less than 24 hours a day, yeah. all caps, we need you to help. You I was literally in Boston when a text was sent. That's really? How, yeah, wow. that's how much has happened. Well, I in. actually cleared my schedule ahead of time, hoping that you guys would. <laughs> oh, my God. So. You just sensed it. Yeah, I sensed it in the air. Well, I'm so happy to be on. And we're all going to Speedy Romeo's after. After this. We're we so are. glad you're back We're in New York. I'm so happy. New York feels better now that you're here. Yeah. I I've been feeling that too. Yeah. And <laughs> um, if you guys don't read Internet Princess, get on it. That's weird that you haven't already been <laughs> there. But Rain is also about to do a bunch of interesting things Ooh. IRL New York. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope. You think we did it justice. And we can't wait to read all your comments in the million clips we're about to post about it. (laughs) Uh, But we'll be back next week. Thanks so much for listening. Bye. Bye.